you're busy with scale reading. What is the significance of this and why basically do we have to do it? Scale reading allows us to tell the age of each individual fish that we look at. If we look at many fish over a long period of time, that will allow us to build up a, a picture of how the ages of the fish are maybe changing in the river or how the ages are changing in relation to the size of the fish, for example. Have you noticed in the time that you're doing this any real sort of moments of uh, interest? Uh, we see some very interesting fish. The ones that are less common are the ones that are much older, that have maybe been out at sea for three or even four years before returning to the river. Obviously the chances of a fish managing to survive at sea for that length of time are very small. The other ones which are interesting to see are fish which have managed to spawn more than once, return to the sea, return to the river and spawn again. Again, the chances of a fish managing to survive to do this are very small. When a fisherman catches a fish on the river, he can complete a scale packet like this and give us information on the length of the fish, the weight of the fish and whereabouts it was caught. He'll then take some scales from the fish, put them in the packet and send the packet back to the Tweed Foundation. <laughs> my job to analyse the scales from the fish and read the information that we can get from the scales. To do this, I place the scales onto pieces of acetate, make a sandwich from the pieces of acetate and then squeeze the sandwich through a gilt press. This will allow us to see the ridges from one side of the scale and what we call a ghost from the other side. Which side would you use for further uh, investigation? The side that had the ridges on it is now placed under the microscope and we can get a more detailed view of the ridges on the scale. We've now placed the slide under the microscope and using a digital camera we can see the results on the screen. We've focused in on the middle of the scale and this shows us a tight band here where the fish had its first river winter and an area up here where the fish experienced its second river winter and then moved out into the open sea. Looking at these, they remind me of tree rings. Is there a similarity here? As the fish grows, it develops circuli on its scales as they grow. And this is in a similar way to a tree growing and forming tree rings through its trunk. We can now go on and look at the adult phase of growth. We've now zoomed out to look at the whole of the rest of the scale. The area we were looking at before is in here where the fish was a juvenile. It's then moved out into the sea and experienced its first summer in the sea which is represented by this area. The circuli, or the bands that you can see then become closer together and form this dark area that you can follow right round here. And that's the first winter that the fish experienced in the sea. It then continued into its second summer right up to the point at the outside edge here where the fish returned to the river and was caught by the fishermen. So having read the scale we can now put the data that we've learned into our database. It can include the juvenile type of the fish, the adult type of the fish, whether the fish had spawned previously or not, and the amount of erosion that the fish was showing on the edge of its scale. You've mentioned erosion. Could you explain what you mean? When a salmon returns to the river, it stops feeding. So it has to live off its body's reserves of fat and energy. In this scale, we can see that the outside edge is very clean and very sharp. But when the salmon starts to feed off its reserves of energy, 
one of the places it gets that energy from is the root of the scale. If this fish had been in the river for a couple of weeks, this sharp outside edge would have started to erode. This is an example of a scale in which we can see some erosion down this outside edge. This is an indicator to us that the fish has been in the river for at least two or three weeks before it was caught by the fishermen. This database um, allows you therefore to store a vast amount of information. How long does one keep this? At the moment we have about 23,000 uh, fish recorded in our database going back as far as the early 90s and all the scale packets for those fish are stored in a library at the Tweed Foundation so that we can refer back to them in the future if we ever need to.